What a choir that is and what an inspiration for all of us. My dear brothers and sisters, not long ago I received a letter from a concerned mother who pleaded for a general conference talk on a topic that would specifically benefit her two children. A rift had grown between them and they had stopped speaking to each other. The mother was heartbroken. In the letter, she assured me that a general conference message on this topic would reconcile her children and all would be well. This good sister's sincere and heartfelt plea was one of several promptings I have received over these last months that I should say a few words today on a topic that is a growing concern not only for a worried mother, but for many in the church and indeed the world. I'm impressed by the faith of this loving mother that a general conference talk could help heal the relationship between her children. I'm sure that her confidence was not so much in the abilities of the speakers, but in the virtue of the Word of God which has a more powerful effect upon the minds of the people than anything else. Dear sister, I pray that the Spirit will touch your children's hearts. Strained and broken relationships are as old as humankind itself. Ancient Cain was the first to allow the cancer of bitterness and malice to canker his heart. He tilled the ground of his soul with envy and hatred and allowed these feelings to ripen until he did the unthinkable, murdering his own brother and becoming in the process the father of Satan's lies. Since those first days, the spirit of envy and hatred has led to some of the most tragic stories in history. It turned Saul against David the sons of Jacob against their brother Joseph, Laman and Lemuel against Nephi, and Amalekiah against Moroni. I imagine that every person on earth has been affected in some way by the destructive spirit of contention, resentment, and revenge. Perhaps there are even times when we recognize this spirit in ourselves when we feel hurt, angry, or envious. It is quite easy to judge other people, often assigning dark motives to their actions in order to justify our own feelings of resentment. Of course, we know this is wrong. The doctrine is clear. We all depend on the Savior. None of us can be saved without him. Christ's atonement is infinite and eternal. Forgiveness for our sins comes with conditions. We must repent and we must be willing to forgive others. Jesus taught, forgive one another, for he that forgiveth not stands condemned before the Lord, for there remaineth in him the greater sin. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Of course, these words seem perfectly reasonable when applied to someone else. We can so clearly and easily see the harmful results that come when others judge and hold grudges. And we certainly don't like it when people judge us. But when it comes to our own prejudices and grievances, we too often justify our anger as righteous and our judgment as reliable and only appropriate. Though we cannot look into another's heart, we assume that we know a bad motive or even a bad person when we see one. We make exceptions when it comes to our own bitterness because we feel that, in our case, we have all the information we need to hold someone else in contempt. 
The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Romans, said that those who pass judgment on others are inexcusable. The moment we judge someone else, he explained, we condemn ourselves, for none is without sin. Refusing to forgive is a grievous sin, one the Savior warned against. Jesus' own disciples had sought occasion against each other and forgave not one another in their hearts. And for this evil, they were afflicted and sorely chastened. Our Savior has spoken so clearly on this subject that there is little room for private interpretation. I quote, I, the Lord, will forgive whom I will forgive. But then he said, but of you it is required to forgive all men. May I add a footnote here? When the Lord requires that we forgive all men, that includes, of course, forgiving ourselves. Sometimes of all the people in the world, the one is the hardest to forgive, as well as perhaps the one who is most in need of our forgiveness is the person looking back at us in the mirror. This topic of judging others could actually be taught in a two-word sermon. When it comes to hating, gossiping, ignoring, ridiculing, holding grudges, or wanting to cause harm, please apply the following. Stop it. <laughs> it's that simple. We simply have to stop judging others and replace judgmental thoughts and feelings and with a heart full of love for God and his children. God is our Father. We are his children. We are all brothers and sisters. I don't know exactly how to articulate this point of not judging others with sufficient eloquence, passion, and persuasion to make it stick. I can quote scripture, I can try to expound doctrine, and I will even quote a bumper sticker I recently saw. It was attached to the back of a car whose driver appeared to be a little rough around the edges. But the words on the sticker taught an insightful lesson. It read, don't judge me because I sin differently than you. <laughs> we must recognize that we're all imperfect that we are beggars before God. Haven't we all, at one time or another, meekly approached the mercy seat and pleaded for grace? Haven't we wished with all the energy of our souls for mercy to be forgiven for the mistakes we have made and the sins we have committed? Because we all depend on the mercy of God. How can we deny to others any measure of the grace we so desperately desire for ourselves? My beloved brothers and sisters, should we not forgive as we wish to be forgiven? Is this difficult to do? Yes, of course. Forgiving ourselves and others is not easy. In fact, for most of us, it requires a major change in our attitude and way of thinking, even a change of heart. But there's good news. This mighty change of heart is exactly what the gospel of Jesus Christ is designed to bring about, to bring into our life. How is it done? through the love of God. When our hearts are filled with the love of God, something good and pure happens to us. 
we keep